I would like to demonstrate how to work with bond appetite for socket preservation technique when you don't reflect the flap. Press the shaft against the palm of your hand until the first piston reaches the blue line. Now the material is already activated. Remove the syringe head, approach to the socket side and eject the material into the socket. Slightly overfill it and now you take a dry gauze and press firmly the material into the socket. Now if there is not enough place for your finger between the teeth, use a spatula or an elevator peristal and press above the dry gauze. Now you cannot leave the material exposed. What you need to do is to take a barrier, which can be a simple collagen sponge, and place it above the graft. However, it must be sutured together with the soft tissue. So the technique is in that way. Hold the collagen sponge in your hand. Insert the needle from the buccal aspect. Insert it to the bottom of the collagen sponge. And from up to down. Insert the needle into the lingual aspect. And place the sponge above the grafted site and make your first suture to stabilize the collagen sponge in place. Now remember that the collagen sponge must be stabilized together with the soft tissue by its first knot. After stabilizing the collagen sponge in place, or the membrane in place, you continue with a crisscross suturing in order to protect it in a better way. Now the graft is protected and you can leave it exposed in that way. Soft tissue will migrate above the graft and will close the area. That's all. The second session demonstrates how it shouldn't and how it should be done. Because when you work with cement, it's completely different than how you work with granules. You should ignore all of your uh, granules habit in order to work with cement. So here we can see the extraction. After the extraction, the material could not uh, be used in increments like we do with granules. So suppose that you uh, activate the cement with it in syringe properly. However, you cannot eject the material in increments or play with it like you uh, work with uh, granules because uh, as you can see it's a mess and definitely it will never set. So this is the wrong way how to do it. And of course, don't use a tool to push down the material into the bottom of the socket. This is something that shouldn't be done when you work with cement. With granules, we used to do it, but with cement, not. Here is the correct way. Eject the material directly into the grafted site. Press firmly for three seconds. Remove the cement access. And then you must protect it by a simple collagen sponge, which must be secured uh, with the surrounding soft tissue. So here is the collagen sponge, a simple one, which is not expensive. The only thing that you need to do is to trim it a little bit. You shouldn't adapt it. The only thing that you need to do now is to uh, suture it and to secure it into the place. So first we do it outside, not in the oral cavity, in order that the sponge will not get wet and then it will be much more difficult. Then as you can see, we insert the needle into the buccal aspect and then into the lingual aspect and we make our first suture. After that, with a crisscross suturing above it, we stabilize it in place. As you can see, there is no need for any adaptation, you just place it above. And that's how it looks on day one 
immediately after surgery. Now, there is no fear because soft tissue know how to migrate rapidly and safely above the graft due to the nature of the cement. That's how it looks seven days post-op. You can see the proliferation of the soft tissue and the resorption of the collagen sponge. And after 12 days, you can see the suture inside. And during the removal of the suture, we can see that beneath there is the proliferation of the soft tissue above the graft. Of course, the bacteriostatic nature of the graft also helps a lot here. And that's how it looks. After only 30 days, you can see already start the maturation of the soft tissue. Of course, at this stage, you cannot place an implant. You should wait at least three months until the bone will form and maturate it in the grafted site.